Hi and welcome to chapter 4, Positioning for the Forearm. In this chapter we'll be discussing two positions, AP and lateral. For your AP forearm, it is important to keep your epicondyles, which are located on your humerus, so that they are parallel to your image receptor. You will open up your light field to include both the distal joint and proximal joint of your forearm. You will include the proximal row of your carpals all the way up to a portion of your humerus so that both joints are on your film. Central ray is directed to your mid forearm. When you bring your patient into your room, make sure that they've removed any jewelry on their wrist. Have them sit at the end of the table. They are going to supinate their hand. You will be using a 14 by 17 image receptor, except for pediatric patients, you will be using a 10 by 12. If you are using digital radiography, everyone will be on a 14 by 17 cassette. Your entire upper extremity should be on the same plane so you can raise your table up to keep them nice and leveled. Make sure you include your wrist and elbow and your central rays to your mid forearm. You can use a half apron. Set your SID for 40 inches to tabletop. We do not use a grid or AEC. You will be selecting manual technique. Anywhere between 60 to 65 kVp and 1.5 to 5 mass depending on where you're at. For our purposes, we'll be using 60 kVp at 5 mass. When we're evaluating our forearm, your entire proximal row of carpals should be demonstrated. You will have your wrist joint and your elbow joint. A portion of the humerus will be demonstrated, so that distal humerus. You will see some soft tissue. You will have evidence of collimation, no motion, and you will have an optimal density. You should have sharp trabecular markings and a short scale of contrast, which is called black to white or a narrow dynamic range. Your carpals to your distal humerus are included. Your humeral epicondyles are in profile. There will be a slight superimposition of your distal radial ulnar joint and your exposure factor should be optimal. For our lateral forearm, we are going to flex our elbow at 90 degrees. Our wrist will be in a true lateral position. You may clench the fist or keep them straight and your central ray is directed to your mid forearm. Your image receptor, we're going to continue using the 14 by 17. Well, you could use a slightly higher technique than your AP, so instead of 5 mass, maybe 7.5 mass. Your elbows flex 90 degrees. Your arm will be in the same plane. Hand and wrist are in a true lateral, and your central ray is to your mid forearm. Again, you have your half shield for your apron for your shielding. You can use a small focal spot, 40 inch SID for your lateral forearm. When we go to evaluate, we should see the proximal row of carpals, so that means you have your wrist joint and your elbow joint both on your film. Evidence of collimation, your humeral epicondyles are now superimposed and they are now parallel or perpendicular, sorry, perpendicular to your image receptor. When we're evaluating, again, carpals and humerus are both included. Elbow flexed at a 90, hand is nice and straight. And that's it for the two positions that you'll be required for this chapter.